Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Devin and I am homeschooling mom to four kids ages nine to 13. Today I am doing a follow-up video to the last video that I put out, which was the six steps of getting started when homeschooling. Step one is to know your state laws and regulations regarding homeschooling. In today's video, I'm going to be covering Washington homeschooling laws specifically. If you live in Washington and you don't know the state laws, definitely stick around and watch this video. If you live in another state, this still may be helpful for you in helping you to interpret your own state laws. If you don't want to stick around and you want to see future videos, the ones that I will be doing on the other steps of how to start homeschooling, such as discovering your homeschool style, picking curriculum and getting started, then just hit that subscribe button and do the bell notification so that you'll be notified when those videos come up. All right, so let's get started on how to homeschool in Washington State. So before I really get started, you know that I need to put up a disclaimer. I am not a lawyer. I do not interpret the law regularly. I am going to be sharing the official documents that I found the laws in, and I'm going to be sharing my understanding of what I have found. So please do look at the documents for yourself and do your own research, but I'm hoping that this will be helpful for those who aren't sure where to get started. So first of all, I'm going to show you a screenshot of the actual laws and where I would find this information. All right, so here is the Washington State actual documents, the law here, and I will link this below for you to look at yourself. Here are the attendance mandatory age and exceptions. And so this is basically the law and it says that all kids must attend school with the exception of things like private school and then if the child is receiving home-based instruction. And then it talks about that home-based instruction in subsection four. So then we can go down to subsection four and here's subsection four. So here it is the information that you would want to be looking at in order to homeschool in Washington state, basically starting here. And I'm going to be going over what this says and then what it means in my understanding and in the research that I've done. The second site that you can use to look up your Washington state laws and just to be informed is Washington Homeschool Organization. I will also link that down below. So here they just give you a more simplified version of what is needed. So you can look here. They also have a lot of great articles and information that you might want to look at on this website. And then finally, you can go to HSLDA, which is a group of lawyers or a legal organization that fights for homeschoolers' rights. And so they have a lot of information here. And you can also search your state and they will give you information on your state laws. But like I said, in the past, you do want to double check and make sure that this lines up with the law, actual current law and your Washington Homeschool Organization or your own state's organization might keep you better informed and better updated than one that is all over the United States. So just double check, just make sure that you have the correct information for the times that you are homeschooling in. That reminds me, I am making this video at the end of 2021. So anything I say in this video will be current in the end of 2021. So the first thing you need to do is annually file your declaration of intent to homeschool. So you can find that either on Washington Homeschool Organization site, or you can go to the office and get one from the superintendent. Now, you do not have to file this until your child is eight years old, and then you need to file it before the 15th of September. So on the day your child turns eight, you need to have filed this declaration of intent to homeschool and by September 15th. Now, if you're starting in the middle of the school year, that doesn't matter. You can file it at any point in the year. So say you start January 1st, you would file it that time, and then you would file again on September 15th. 
So you must file your declaration of intent from the time your child is eight to the age of 18. Now, one thing I'm not sure about is what if your child graduates from your homeschool before the age of 18? So that may, might be something to look into if you're running into that issue, but I think that for now, most of us just need to know, start at eight and do it every year. The second thing I'm seeing here is that your child must be instructed by a parent, a legal guardian, or a certificated person, or supervised by a certificated person. So the parent can qualify as the educator if they have received a high school diploma as well as over 45 or more college level quarter credits. So if you have taken about a year of college, you are qualified to teach your child. Don't worry if you have not completed any college courses. There is a course that you can take at a vocational school. There's colleges, you can take a homeschooling course. Those are not hard to find. Or if the school's superintendent gives you permission to be the educator of your child, then that is another way that you can homeschool your children. Third of all, there are some specific subjects that we are supposed to teach our children when we are homeschooling them. Now I'm gonna read them off the list because I cannot memorize them. So the things are occupational education, science, mathematics, language, social studies, history, health, reading, writing, spelling, and the development of an appreciation of art and music. It doesn't exactly say how much time we need to spend on each of those things, but we should cover all of those areas within their homeschooling time. So from kindergarten to 12th grade, we should have taught those things to a reasonable amount. Now, there are some time requirements in Washington State. So we are supposed to teach 180 days or the equivalent of a thousand educational hours. However, as far as that instruction goes, I'm going to read to you what it says here at the very end of Washington State Legislator, the page that I have linked below. At the very bottom of that document, it says, the legislator recognizes that home-based instruction is less structured and more experimental than the instruction normally provided in a classroom setting. Therefore, the provision of subsection four of this section relating to the nature and quantity of instructional and related educational activities shall be liberally construed. So what that means is you do not have to say, I have to do a thousand hours of sitting at the table and doing work in worksheets. It can be reading, it can be baking, it can be outside exploring nature, it can be anything that's educational. You're helping your dad work on the car, you're doing experiments, you're playing <laughs> with Play-Doh. So those 1,000 hours of instructional time that we're supposed to do, it can be liberally construed. There's all this flexibility on what we consider education as home educators. So the fourth thing that we need to do as homeschoolers or home educators is we need to have our child assessed annually, either by anecdotal assessment, by a certificated person or teacher who is currently working within the field of education or a standardized test. So that is one of the four things we need to do as Washington homeschoolers. As far as those tests go, however, our child does not have to meet certain standards. All we need to show is that our child is making progress from year to year. So they don't have to reach a certain standard. We don't have to worry about our kids failing those standardized tests. We just have to be able to show that our child is improving year over year. And the expectations on us is that we are doing our best to help our child make that progress. And if there is a stall in progress that we will be made aware and we will try to remedy the situation. So that is the fourth thing that we need to do as homeschoolers in Washington State. Along with that, we need to keep records of those yearly assessments, as well as we need to keep a record of our child's immunization record. Whatever their immunization record happens to be, we need to have it on hand. The main reason for that is in case we do ever want to enroll our child in school again. 
So we need to be able to show that we have been complying with the law in that way. Essentially, those are the things that we are required to do as Washington State homeschoolers. So it does not really say that we have to keep track of our hours. It doesn't really say that we have to prove that we've done this or that. Really, all we need to keep for our records are those standardized tests showing improvement over time. And if it hasn't shown improvement, be ready to supply what you're doing to try to fix that situation. However, it doesn't hurt to keep a small portfolio of what your child does every year that you can look back on with your family and show your child and just for you to see the progress. So once you know the state laws, then you're ready to withdraw your child from school. When I go to the superintendent to turn in my declaration of intent to homeschool, I like to make sure that I get a copy myself, a stamped copy of my declaration of intent I can use this either as proof that I did it in case anyone ever comes and says I didn't do it, or I can use it as proof that I am homeschooling and use that to get some discounts in places that give teacher discounts. So not a bad idea. You can just take it in during school hours, take it into the superintendent, give it to them, have them sign it and ask for a certified copy back so that you can keep it for your records. I would recommend you do that as well as your other records for homeschooling. Make sure you let the school know that you are withdrawing your child, send them a letter or an email or go talk to them and see what you need to do to do that. And then you can take your child out and start homeschooling them. So I hope this information was helpful for you, whether or not you are homeschooling in Washington state or in another state. I hope it helps you to kind of understand what the laws are and what we are required to do and what we are not required to do. Please leave a comment below if you have any more questions for me and I will answer any questions that I can. I will also be sure to link any important things that I mentioned, any websites, down below so that you can take a look for yourself and make sure that what I'm saying looks like what the law says. Thanks for coming and I hope you stick around for my future follow-up videos. Do like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell notification if you do want to be notified when those new videos are up. Thanks again. Goodbye.